Sparrow, thank you for your attention. Um, this is our roadmap here. I want to tell you about working memory, if you haven't heard of it. Working memory is this human ability to maintain information in the focus of attention uh, for manipulation as you work with it towards your goal, uh, all the while ignoring information that's irrelevant to your goal, so avoiding distraction. So it's a really important thing. And uh, my interest here in the research that I'm going to show has to do with uh, how physical activity may influence this human ability. So there's an important meta-analysis from a few years ago uh, by uh, Chang and others. Uh, they found that there was a small, uh, small positive effect uh, in terms of a boost in working memory, or in, 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 excuse me, in terms of this, uh, this work, it's more broadly <coughs> defined in terms, of, uh, in terms of cognition, so working memory wasn't the only executive uh, function that was studied, but from a thousand uh, estimates of effect size, there seems to be a small positive uh, effect. Um, so I put together a, uh, an experiment, I designed an experiment to uh, replicate a, a particular study. The pre-registration was available here, but uh, given the timeline that I had, I wasn't able to pull it off that way. So if you want to look back at what I plan to do, it's on this, the, on this link on Open Science Framework. Um, but my sample, as it turned out, was much smaller than I really needed to perform what I needed to do. So um, I like this simple waffle function here, uh, waffle plot here that shows that uh, the people in the left group, uh, they watched 30 minutes of Seinfeld. The people in the uh, right side, the, this, this orange group, these are the people who uh, spent 30 minutes on a treadmill at a self pace, at, at, a, uh, at a moderate pace. Uh, that was up to them. I gave them some, uh, some uh, guidelines based on their age and, and desired heart rate to make it moderate. Um, but uh, this is all I had here, really. So uh, this is one way to look at it. We can see that the boldest uh, horizontal line on the right in the gray plot, gray box plot, uh, this is the treadmill group. Uh, it is higher than the, the median for the Seinfeld group, um, but we, we do have some, have some variation here. You can see the uh, black <coughs> dots indicate the individuals in my, in my samples. Um, so we can, we can, we can think about uh, analyzing this in a couple different ways. Um, we can start by putting, uh, taking the uh, data and turning it into two, two separate vectors, uh, indicating the uh, two different groups that we had. So we're taking the uh, working memory uh, scores and we're putting them into two, two separate vectors. And since I was violating a lot of assumptions here for most parametric tests, I went to a non-parametric test uh, that doesn't uh, require us to have equal uh, variance, uh, no normal distributions. Uh, those were the things I went for a permuted uh, Brunner Munzel test. One of the great things about uh, 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 being an R user is you get to play with everybody's tools. So this comes from the Brunner Munzel package. As you can see here, uh, the uh, difference here is not statistically significant, but that's not a very rich insight. So we can go about it a couple of different ways. Uh, compliments of Daniel Lakins at Eindhoven University. Uh, we have the uh, two, two one-sided test uh, uh, function here from the toaster package. Here we can just feed in uh, some parameter values, the uh, means for the groups, the standard deviations, sample sizes. We indicate the uh, equivalence bounds. Uh, so here we're saying that we're going to uh, deem anything that's uh, between negative 0.1 and positive 0.1 as pretty much equivalent to zero. So uh, this is that visualized here. We see the parameter estimate uh, there in the square in, in the middle, and we see the confidence interval uh, going all the way touching, touching to zero. One of the things that we uh, may, may, may mistake when we look at a confidence interval like this is we may start to s think that uh, the, the parameter values that are closer to the, to, or the, the values that are closer to the parameter estimate maybe are more likely than the, than the values that could happen at the uh, edges of this confidence interval, but this seems to be a mistake. Uh, so if we take more of a Bayesian perspective, uh, and uh, we, we take, we take a, a tool from uh, John Kruski, we can use the best packages in the best MCMC uh, function, feeding in our Seinfeld and exercise vectors, setting a random seed, and we can, uh, we can, we can start to uh, make our simulations here. So if you direct your attention to the left column, the uh, second one down here, this is the trace plot for the uh, differences, for, for the mean differences here. So you can see, uh, so, so you see the trace plot on the left, and you see the density of those uh, mean difference, uh, those mean difference, uh, the mean difference on this uh, density plot here on the right. Um, and lastly, we can see uh, on the right-hand column, third one down here, we can see how that comes together for the difference in means. Uh, plot here. So we can see that uh, given this uh, black line that indicates the uh, credible interval, we can see that uh, in this depiction we actually do get uh, 
different, so, so uh, unlike the confidence interval that I showed you from the equivalence test, we can see here the probability of the different values. Thank you.